I want to invite you, uh, if you would, please, uh, to uh, find your way in the Bible to the Gospel of Mark. And this is such an appropriate passage uh, as we prepare to uh, dedicate uh, this precious baby unto the Lord. And uh, so uh, the Bible does speak uh, to uh, children. And uh, so that's what we're going to, uh, we're going to look at some important lessons. Um, and, and these lessons are taught to us by, of all people, a little child. And I want you to see, um, I want you to see uh, these great lessons for life from a little child. Uh, to begin with, let's look at Mark chapter 10, um, and uh, beginning in verse number 13, and then I also will um, uh, ask you to uh, look in uh, Matthew as well. Now, these are, these are passages of the Bible. Uh, God has such a love, such a heart for children, and he has many important uh, words uh, to say to us about children. You know, let me say, um, I don't, I don't want to go into the details. I probably don't have to because I'm thinking, I'm thinking most of you have heard the details, but um, there, there are, uh, there are um, uh, things happening to children that have been happening to children. And Whereas it concerns that which happens to a child, the Word of God is very specific that when anybody hurts a child, they'll answer directly to God. And, and I'm going to show you that from the Word of God today. Uh, we've got a family here today out of love for their precious children. Uh, they're inviting God to... to uh, enter into uh, this great work of raising children and bringing children up uh, for the glory of God. And, um, you know, I'm so thankful that there are families that still love and care for their children, their grandchildren, uh, their nieces, their nephews. And uh, what, what, a great, uh, what a great testimony that is. I wish that were the case for all children, but uh, recent news headlines in this city, in this valley, are a real reminder that such is not always the case. And uh, so we'll look at uh, these important truths from the Word of God uh, as it concerns uh, uh, God's heart uh, about children. So uh, Mark chapter 10 and verse uh, number 13. So if you would, please look on there. I'll read aloud as you follow along in, uh, in the Bible. And they brought young children to him. That would be Jesus. That he should touch them. And that is another way of saying to bless those children. And that's what we desire is God's blessing upon the lives of our children. For that matter, we ought to desire God's blessing upon all of our lives. And so that's, uh, that's what they're doing uh, 2,000 years ago. But I want you to watch an interesting uh, response by the followers of Jesus and his disciples rebuked those that brought them uh, the parents perhaps the grandparents perhaps uh, uh, another family member bringing those precious uh, young children to Jesus are met with a rebuke from the followers of Jesus one can only imagine why they are rebuking the parents and 
relatives who are bringing those children to Jesus that he may touch them and bless them. Um, could it be that um, children are thought to be unimportant? God only knows why they would respond to these children being brought, brought to Jesus in such a manner. Could it be that they really did not know the one they were following? Could it be that they supposed that Jesus would not be interested in children because, because somehow children are less important than the grown-ups? I mean, you, you'll have to think about this, meditate on this. I, I just find this such uh, a, a, really a surprising response to those who are bringing children unto Jesus. Uh, let me say this uh, about those who are bringing the children unto Jesus. I, I think they are the, among the wisest parents or grandparents or relatives uh, on, on the planet uh, who would bring those children to Jesus that they might know God's blessing upon their lives and God's blessing upon their families. Uh, and, and I'm just perplexed by the response of these people um, who, uh, who, would re who would react this way, but, uh, uh, but they did. And... Uh, and let's, let's read on in, in verse number 14. But when Jesus saw... Now, Jesus is going to respond to the response of those disciples. And, and look at this. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, said this to those adult followers, he said, suffer, which means allow or permit the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. So he, he lets them know in no uncertain terms how much he values, how much he loves, how much he cares about every little child. And he's displeased that they treated those parents who were bringing their children unto him in the way that they did, and he lets them know it. Jesus loves the little children. Jesus wants those little children. And uh, so he is pleased whenever we bring a child unto him that he may touch them and bless them as only he can. So this business today before the church is very pleasing to God. And, uh, and let's, let's uh, read uh, verse 15. He says, verily, which means truly. He's going to speak a truth. Uh, he's going to give us a detail about uh, the way life works, the way eternal life works. And he says, uh, Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall not enter therein. They're, they're not going in. They're, they're not getting in. Now we'll look at uh, the, pa the passage in, in a few moments in Matthew and, and we're going to see some important detail about how a little child receives the kingdom of God and, and what that means. It's important that we understand that. Because Jesus just said that unless I receive his kingdom the way a little child receives his kingdom, I'm not getting in. I'm not going into the kingdom of God. And, you know, that means there's only one other place I can spend eternity, and if not heaven, uh, then uh, the only other place the Bible mentions is hell. 
And so uh, it's important that we, that we look at how a little child receives the kingdom of God and, and what that means. So we'll do that. And uh, so uh, look at this in verse 16. Look at this. It's absolute blessing to me. And he, Jesus, took them up in his arms and put his hands upon them and blessed them. You know, that's what we're bringing this precious baby unto Jesus uh, to do this morning. And uh, you know, this is uh, uh, the body of Christ. He is the head of this church. And remember this, anytime this church assembles in Jesus' name, remember what Jesus promised? He promised that he would be right here in the midst of us. So we're glad that Jesus is here per his promise. Now let's, uh, let's go over to Matthew, if you would, please. Uh, you're not far from it, Matthew chapter 18. And uh, let's find out from God's word, what does that mean to receive the kingdom of God as a little child? What, what does that mean? Because Jesus said, if I don't do that, I'm not getting in. So let's, let's look at, at that in Matthew chapter 18 and... Uh, and, and look at verse number one. I mean, you know, you got some adults here in verse number one. And I want you to see what the adults are concerned about. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus. There are those disciples again saying, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? So they were, they were vying for position. They were vying for notoriety. They were vying for celebrity status. I mean, you know, who among us, us disciples, who among us, tell us Jesus, is going to be the greatest in your kingdom? And, uh, boy, you know, if you think about it, there's some pride going on there. And uh, in, in, in another passage, we'll not take time to look at it, but there, were, there was a mother with two sons, and she came to Jesus and she uh, wanted her sons to be seated by Jesus in his kingdom. And, uh, you know, uh, so status, power, notoriety, popularity. I mean, so, you know, in one passage we found the disciples rebuking the parents for bringing the little children to Jesus. Now we find the disciples squabbling about who's going to be the most important in the kingdom of God. And, I mean, Jesus is having, he's having, there, there's, there's some issues going on with these disciples, but don't worry, Jesus knows how to navigate through all of those issues. And remember, they're called disciples because they're learners, and Jesus is teaching them, and uh, it's, it's quite a process. But now, now, so how is Jesus going to answer their question? And that's what we're going to look at in verse 2. And Jesus, now watch this, Jesus called a little child unto him. That's very important. Uh, and set him, so we know it's a, we know it's a, a little boy in this instance, uh, and set him in the midst of them. So, so here's what we know. Here's what we know. Jesus made the call to the little child, to the little boy. And, and so we understand that the little boy must have come unto Jesus. For Jesus to be, uh, uh, to be um, uh, putting the child in the midst of them, well, that means the child answered the call. He answered the call. Now remember, what we're looking at is, uh, unless we follow the example of a little child, we're not getting in. We're not getting into the kingdom of heaven. First thing I want you to notice is, Jesus called, the child came. Now, do you, do you understand, uh, Jesus is still calling today. He's still calling today. 
Uh, let, let me read this so that you know that I'm not just, you know, making this up to embellish uh, this true Bible account. No, I'm not. Uh, Jesus is still calling today. Listen to this. And uh, I'm going to read it for you. I'll give you the reference. It's Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Um, listen to this. Listen to the call of Jesus. He says, come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Now, now watch this. Though your sins be as scarlet, and, and they are, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. <laughs> he says, he says, as, as, we, as I reason with you, he says, if you'll come to me, and as I reason with you about the fact that you've sinned against me, and we all have, about the fact that Christ died for your sins, Jesus came from heaven to earth for the express purpose of dying to pay for all of our sins against God, the Bible says Christ died for the sins of the world. As, as, I, as I reason with you, if you'll come to me, Jesus says, and, and as I reason with you, uh, I'm, I'm, going to, uh, I'm going to share the good news. The good news is uh, that uh, Christ died for our sins, all of our sins against uh, God the Heavenly Father. Um, he's, gonna, he's going to explain... Uh, to us that the wages of sin, oh, there's a high price tag that comes on sin. Uh, the wages of sin is death. What does that mean? Eternal separation from God in a place the Bible calls hell. You know, those sins have to be paid for. Somebody's got to pay for those sins. Your sins, my sins, we've all sinned. The Ten Commandments, yeah, we've all broken them. We've all broken them. And, and if you want to take the time, I'd be glad to show you. I'd be glad to sh uh, share with you that we've all broken all ten of them. And I'll be glad to show that to you. But the fact is, the wages of sin is death. Folks, that's hell. But the gift of God, the gift of God is eternal life. That's heaven. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay? Uh, and, and he says, come, and, and I'm going to reason with you. I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to share some truth with you. And, uh, and then he'll, he'll go on to say, uh, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, you mean, if I'll be honest with God about about the fact that I've sinned against him. If, if I admit that to him, if I own up to it, and I agree with him that I've sinned against him, uh, and, and, and Jesus, I've learned that Jesus died to pay for my sins, why would he do that? Because he loves you. Because he loves you. He took your place so that you could go to heaven if you're willing to come to him. If you're willing to accept him, to receive him. Do you know of all of the great religious leaders of the world? Listen to this. They have found, they have documented all of the graves of all of the great religious leaders of the world. In fact, if you go on a world tour, they'll show you the burial sites. They'll show you where the body of that great religious leader lies one of them is in, encased in glass and so that you can see the religious leader's body. But, but here's what distinguishes the Lord Jesus Christ, the great God of glory, from all of the other religious leaders of the world. When they take you to his grave and they allow you to look in, the only thing you're going to see is empty because as he reasons with you on the third day he will explain to you that he rose again he rose again from the grave why is that important 
because he's the only one that defeated death and he rose victorious over death. He rose victorious over hell and he rose victorious over sin. And so uh, he's going to reason with you if you'll come to him. And so here's what, I, here's what I want you to understand is this little child came to him. And it's important. Remember, unless you follow the example of this little child, you're not getting in. You cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And so I tell you, this little child is one of the greatest teachers I've ever found in all of the Bible. Here's, here's another invitation. Uh, this is to those who have believed in Jesus or those who know him as well as those who do not yet know him. This is called the great invitation. And uh, here uh, Jesus says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This little child came when Jesus called. And the question I have is, will you come when Jesus calls you? Rest. Oh, I tell you, uh, there, there are probably more distressed and stressed out people right now, at least in this country. But I'm not going to just limit it to this country. I'm going to say the world around. I mean... There, there are people, I mean, if, I don't know if you can believe this or not, there are people that have for, what is it now, what is it, 11 months? No, it's not 11, 10 months, that have been running in fear. They've been running in fear. Uh, because, why? Because they don't want to die. They, they, don't, they don't want to contract this this infection, and, uh, and they don't want to die. And, and here's the reason they're afraid to die. Listen to me. Here's why, this, is, this is the bedrock of the reason for why they're afraid to die. They don't want to face God. It is appointed unto a man once to die, but after this, the judgment. See, right after we die, then we face God. But if you come to Jesus, the way this little child came to Jesus, if you come to Jesus, all of your sins, if you accept Jesus, if you invite him to come into your life, all of your sins are forgiven. And so when you die, there is no judgment for your sins to determine what your degree of punishment in hell will be if you come to Jesus you're forgiven. There is no judgment. Jesus paid for your sins. See, that's such an incredible a little teacher here uh, in uh, the Word of God as we go back to Matthew chapter 18 and in Matthew chapter number 18. And so uh, Jesus called, the little child came. Um, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. It's not the church is not the way. The church is, what do you mean the church is not the way? Nowhere in this holy book can I find you a single uh, uh, Bible scripture uh, that teaches the church is the way to heaven. Uh, listen, I'm a member, I'm a member of uh, of the, uh, <clears throat> the church that Jesus instituted, that he founded 2,000 years ago. But I'm no different than any of the rest of you. I, I am, uh, as the Bible says, I'm a sinner who came to Jesus. He forgave me and he saved me by his grace. I can't save you. This church can't save. No church can save anybody because the church is not the Savior. Jesus is the Savior. He's the only Savior. And so uh, the mandate is to come to him, you see. And this little child came to him. Now, uh, let's, let's move on in, in uh, is Matthew 18 and verse 3, verse 3 and 4. Uh, 
I mean, Jesus is having quite a time with his, these disciples. So they're like, hey, you know, <clears throat> who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? I mean, you know, who's going to be the most important? Who's going to have the most authority? Who's going to have the most power? Uh, who's going to have the most control? You know, uh, and, and Jesus says, hey, to this little boy, come, come over here. And he, he puts that little boy right in the middle of him. And verse number three, and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted. Except ye be converted. Now, now, the English Bible comes from the Greek language because that was the language of the world 2,000 years ago, and that's because the Greeks ruled the world prior to the Romans. <clears throat> and uh, so the word converted in, in the Greek word is strepho, and it means to turn. It means to turn, and the Bible calls that repentance. You heard the word repentance. Jesus said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. And Of course, any time the word perish is used, uh, you've, you've heard the word perish in the most famous verse of all the Bible. I know you have. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. You've heard it, but have everlasting life. Well, the word perish means to die and go to hell. Uh, the word strepho means to turn from your rebellion against God to admit to him that you too have sinned against him and then to be willing to accept Jesus, invite him to come into your life because why? He's the one that died to pay for all of your sins against God. <laughs> you know, and when I think about what happened to these kids, little baby died because the car owner wouldn't allow the car window to be broke so they could rescue the child. Little baby died because an irate parent threw the baby from a second-story balcony out into the yard. You say, are you making this up, preacher? Are, are, you trying to, are you trying to add drama? No, I'm just telling you what goes on. And it goes on right here. And it goes on across the nation. It goes on around the world, you see. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, the only answer to, uh, to defeating this sin is Jesus Christ. Because when he comes in, he breaks the power of sin to control a person. He literally sets that man or that woman free. Free to do what? Well, free to live the way God intended you to live. To live in victory over sin. You know, uh, Listen, sin destroys lives. Uh, do I even need to tell you that? It destroys, it destroys uh, families. It destroys marriages. It destroys churches. It destroys nations. And uh, so it's serious. Um, Jesus said in verse 3 of Matthew 18, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted, and become as what? And become as what? There it is again, and become as little children. Can you believe that? The child is the teacher here, not the adult disciples. They're all busy fighting about who's going to be the most important in heaven. The child is the teacher here. And, uh, you know, so what we need to understand about this little child, because this is a parallel passage, uh, it's, it's linked with, the passage in Mark and other passages, we need to understand about this little child is, this little child turned to Jesus, turned from sin, turned to Jesus. Uh, and uh, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Verse 4, please. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child. It's an act of humility. Now, I don't know about you, um, but when I'm in, when I'm in a group of people, uh, uh, especially, especially when God 
is speaking to my heart and saying to me, while the Bible is being preached, while the Bible is being preached, God is speaking to my heart and he's saying, I want you to accept Jesus. I want you to come to Jesus. The Spirit of God is speaking to my heart about coming to Jesus. It's like I'm, I'm looking all around and I'm, I'm saying, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not doing that. You know why I'm not doing that? Because everybody's looking. See? And you know what that is? That, that, could, be, that could be out of pride. It could be a pride issue. Usually it is a pride issue. It's a pride issue because I care more about what people think about me than I care about what God thinks about me. <clears throat> so I'm not going to come. See, this child exhibited humility. This child in front of everybody, in front of everybody, when Jesus called, this little child came. And Jesus is telling us that is an act of humility on the part of the child. A lot of people won't come because of pride. A lot of people won't come because of fear. And so this child exhibited both humility and faith. He came when Jesus called him. It's just an incredible, this little child is such an incredible teacher. Uh, and, and then, uh, look, uh, the, the, the child came. Now, now, now here, I want you to, you know, keep your place. I'll read uh, out of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Somebody says, well, what's, what's the big deal about coming when Jesus calls? Why is the when so important? Why can't it be when I decide to come or when I want to come to him? Why, did, why is the when so important? Well, the Bible answers that, and I'll read it to you from 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And verse 2, the Bible says, For he saith, that would be, that would be Jesus, He saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, in the day of salvation have I succored, which means comforted thee, now listen, behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The child came when Jesus called, so he came at the time of God's calling. You say, why is the time so important? Well, let me ask you a question. I want to ask you a question. Who here, who here right now could guarantee me that you'll be given another day of life on earth? You, you, you say, I guarantee you, preach, I can guarantee you that I know come Monday, I'm going to make it through the entire day Monday, safe, intact, and alive on, alive on planet Earth. I can guarantee you I know that I'll be alive for another day. See, the Bible says now is the day of salvation. Do you ever stop and think, why does God say now? It's because it is appointed unto a man once to die, and after that, the judgment. God sets that appointment, and God wants you to come now because only God knows your appointment time may be closer than you realize. God says come now. So uh, another important lesson from this little child he came when Jesus called. And then uh, I, I'm going to read something else to you from Mark uh, chapter number 10. Uh, Mark chapter number 10. Stay with me. I'll only keep you just a, a brief while longer. And uh, I tell you, you're a blessing to, to see this kind of attentiveness to the Word of God. It's, a, it's amazing. Uh, in Mark chapter 10 and verse number 15, uh, the, the, when the child came, when the child came, the child came under the authority of Jesus Christ, you see. Uh, now look, Mark 10 and verse number 15 uh, is, speaks this important truth. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. You, you see, uh, you understand, I, I'm sure you do, when Jesus said come, 
that little child was exhibiting uh, humility and faith, but he was also uh, he was also coming under the authority of Jesus Christ. Most people, when Jesus calls, will not come. Why is that? They don't want to come under the authority of Jesus Christ. Well, why not? Because they want to be the authority of their own life. You know, the Bible says, uh, uh, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Uh, would you believe if I were to say to you that God knows better about life and how life should be lived and how to live a, a blessed life, a good life, than do any of us. I mean, we could combine all of our total knowledge and wisdom together, and it wouldn't even be a speck compared to what God knows about life. You know what? God doesn't want us to come because he, he, he's trying to uh, be a killjoy. He doesn't want us to come to him and come under his authority and his power because he's trying to uh, ruin anything or keep us from anything good. You know why he wants us to come? He wants us to come to keep us from absolutely destroying our own lives. And uh, do I even have to tell you that's what's going on? That's what's going on. People wrecking, ruining, destroying their own lives. Um, and uh, that's all Jesus is after. He wants you to live the best possible life this side of heaven that can possibly be lived when you come under his authority. Oh, this little child, Jesus called, that child came under the authority of Christ. And then I want you to see a fourth thing that little child did. That little child was blessed because he came. He was blessed because he came under the authority of Jesus Christ. And I'll read it to you from uh, Mark 10. And, uh, and verse 16, now listen, he took them up in his arms, he put his hands upon them and blessed them. Because those children came to Jesus, um, they got the blessing. They got the blessing of God. And I'm so glad there's a precious little baby that is being brought to Jesus today. Uh, that, is a, that is a profound act. That is a wise act to bring a child to Jesus that we may together pray for God's blessing upon that child's life. Uh, and uh, so what a commendable thing that is. Uh, notice in uh, uh, Matthew chapter 6, I, I really do, I'd encourage you to, to look at this one. You're not far right now, uh, Matthew 6, but that child was blessed because, uh, because he came unto Jesus. He said, how do you know that, preacher? How do you know that child was blessed? Now remember, we're talking about the kingdom and getting into the kingdom of God and that unless we follow the example of this little child, we're not getting in. We're not getting in. Now we can, you know, if we, you want to lie, we want to lie to ourselves and deceive ourselves. That'll get us nowhere but into more trouble uh, listen to this. These are, these, these are strange times we're living in. Uh, these are really different times. What does it all mean? Well, the, the long story short is it means we better get ready to meet Jesus because he's coming. What is happening right now, he foretold what happened 2,000 years ago. And this isn't just happening in America. This is happening the world round, and uh, we better get ready to meet Jesus. He's coming. Uh, but notice in, in Matthew chapter 6, and uh, then I want you to see this verse 31. So would you, would you look at verse 31? I'm going to read 32 and 33 of Matthew chapter 6. Therefore take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? You know, I'm, I mean, I have no way to verify. I have no way to verify, I mean, I mean, you know, I hear what's being reported, but, but you know what I'm hearing? I mean, I am hearing 
that the lines of people for to go and get food is is unparalleled uh, unparalleled in the history of our nation it it surpasses anything that happened even during the great depression in the 1929 and on up through the mid 30s that people are in lines miles long waiting for a box or a bag of food just to get them through a few more days and now the vendors the health agencies are begging for more food because they're running out i mean look this stuff is real i mean Look at this. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink? Wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Now, a Gentile, that's, that's a word. That's a word, again, that comes from the Greek language, and uh, it means literally, it means an unsaved person. A person that has never come to Jesus, it means a person that has never accepted Jesus, the one who died to pay for their sins. And I'm not talking about joining a church. I don't, you can join every church in the valley. You can be baptized in every baptismal until uh, you, you're, you're soaked to the bone. Uh, that's, that's not what the Bible teaches. It's coming to Jesus. Jesus is the savior he's the only way to heaven he's the only way to salvation from hell and from the power of sin and uh, sin's destructiveness over all of our lives and uh, and so uh, it, it means uh, for all these things do the lost people uh, the lost people the gentiles seek for now he says for your heavenly father to you that have come to Jesus, your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. The implication of that is because he knows your need, he's going to supply that need. But look at this in verse 33. Watch this. You don't get anything else. I hope you get this, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. There it is, the kingdom of God. And his righteousness which his righteousness, this is his righteousness, the word of God, the book of life, the blueprint for life, the roadmap to heaven, here it is. And by the way, sin will keep you from this book or, or this book will keep you from sin. You decide, your choice. Uh, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these, what? Things shall be what? Added unto you. Oh, this is such a wise little little child here, such a wise little boy. So we have God's word on it that because he came to Jesus in humility, because he came to Jesus in faith, because he came under the power and authority of Jesus Christ to rule and reign in his life, to be the Lord of his life, because he came to Jesus, every need of his life is going to be met. I mean, I, I'm still stuck. This is where I'm stuck. 65 million Americans lost their jobs. And what is it weekly? Close to a million every week are still losing their jobs. I don't know how your life works, but the way my life works is no job, no money. No money, no way to pay the bills. I've known Jesus since I came to Jesus March 11th of 1972. Let me just share this brief snippet for my testimony. March 11th, 1972, up in Casper, Wyoming, I attended a Bible preaching church. When the message was done, God was saying, I want you to accept Jesus. Almost didn't walk up because I kept looking around and seeing all the people there. And I thought, I'm not going up there in front of all these people. But then they sang the last song of the invitation. 
And I decided I don't care what any of you people think. I'm going up there. And I'm accepting Jesus and I'm getting saved from hell and I'm going to heaven. And I went up there. My heart was broken because of all my sins against God. I knelt there, took a Bible and showed me from the Bible how to be saved. I got saved. I came to Jesus. And here's what I want to say to you. So how many years is that? 1972 to... Where's the math heads? Help me out here. You numbers people. 70. Huh? 48, 48 years? 48 years ago. In 48 years. I, now we, along with our children, in 48 years since I came to Jesus, I have never known a single need that God has not met. Ever in 48 years. Now, don't you suppose if he's met all of my needs for 48 years that he's going to see me through the rest of the journey? Don't you suppose? Now, I bet my, my faith was tried in, uh, what was it, two, was it 2001? We were looking for a house. Oh, my soul. We, uh, Kathleen took here. I was uh, trying to find a house to place to live to bring my and I mean my faith was tried we looked at I think I always say 50 because it seems like we looked at a lot of houses and uh, you know right there at the very tail end of looking God showed us a just a beautiful house you know and uh, so you know uh, God has been faithful this little child was blessed because he came to Jesus. He came to Jesus. Now, let's finish this up, please. Matthew 18. And uh, so uh, I, I want you to see a not so idle threat, please. And really, it's not a threat. It's, it's a promise. God doesn't have to threaten anybody. If God, if God says it, he just does it. Now, now watch this. In Matthew 18 and uh, verse Matthew 18 and verse uh, five and on, we're just going to go down. Um, would you look at this? 18:5, Matthew 18:5. But whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. That is that is how that is how close and intertwined Jesus Christ is with every little child. Whatever happens to a little child. It happens to Jesus. Uh, but whoso shall offend one of these little ones, whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe, believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he was drowned in the depths of the sea. Woe unto the world because of offenses for it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Jesus is speaking very directly, speaking very matter-of-factly right now to whomever would offend a little child. I don't suppose there's, there's anyone more helpless on the face of the planet than a little child. Now watch this. Verse 8, wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, now, now just stay with me. If thy hand or thy foot offend thee, now again, as it pertains to hurting a child, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into what? everlasting fire and if thine hand offend thee pluck it off and and cast it from thee it is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than two eyes and to be cast into hell fire and there's only one way to cut off the sin nature there's only one one way to cut off um uh, uh, a, a, a person's sin nature that, that 
would offend a child, that would hurt a child, that would injure a child. And the only way to defeat that sin nature is by coming to Jesus Christ. You come to him whom the Son sets free, ye shall be free indeed. No longer a slave to sin. Do you realize how many people are controlled by sin? I want to stop this. I know I need to stop this. I know it, but I just can't stop this. It's because the only one who can stop this is Jesus Christ. And when you invite him to come in, that sin is cut off. It's better to have that sin cut off than to die and go to hell. And yes, Jesus, yes, he died to pay for those sins. Every one of them. Every one of them in my life, in your life. It's all been paid for. The only thing left to do is come to him. And the moment you do, he forgives you. Now look at verse number 10. And this is where I'll conclude. Take heed that ye despise. The word despise means to think of as nothing. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels, every one of these little ones, every one of them has an angel. Every single one of them has an angel. Now watch this. Their angels do always behold the face of my Father, which is in heaven. What's that angel do? And why, why is that angel positioned before the face of God the Heavenly Father? That angel is there and every, every offense, everything, is communicated to God the Father because it is God the Father that we all must face in judgment. So the only way to avoid the judgment of God upon us for all of our sins against Him, the only way is to do what the little child did and come to Jesus. Because when you come to Jesus... He who died to pay for all of your sins will forgive you. What does that mean, forgive you? It means he will cleanse you of all your sins, past, present, and future. And only then, only then, will you be permitted to enter into the kingdom of God. And my question for you is, will you come to Jesus I hope you already have. But if there's never been a time in your life that you can say matter-of-factly, I came to Jesus. Like this little child, I humbled myself. I came by faith. I came under his authority, his power to rule my life. And uh, my life has been blessed since I came to Jesus. If you've never come to Jesus... It'd be better for you to come to Jesus than to die and pay for your own sins in hell. Those sins must be paid for. They're going to be paid for. You can either accept Jesus and he'll pay for those sins. He already did. Or you can reject him and then you've got to pay for your own sins in a literal burning hell. I came to Jesus. I hope you will too. And uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and bow our, let's bow our, our heads as uh, the pianist uh, uh, prepares uh, this uh, song of invitation. And, uh, you know, as, uh, we, uh, as, we, uh, uh, as we prepare to transition into the child dedication portion of this service, um, I'm just going to ask you with head bowed, eyes closed, this is a very private moment between you and God. I'm just going to ask you as God looks on, and listens in, of course he, of course he does. You know, he's everywhere. Uh, God loves you. And uh, he loves you so much that he sent his only begotten son to die to pay for your sins against him. 
That's how much He loves you. That's how much He wants to save you from hell. That's how much He wants you to spend forever with Him in heaven. Oh, God loves you. Uh, but the question is, would you come to Jesus? Is there anyone here uh, right now that would say, Preacher, I, I believe I'd like to come to Jesus. I, I believe I want to get this settled. I'd like to get this settled. Uh, and uh, I, I'd like to come to Jesus. And uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to ask Jesus to, I'd like to ask him to forgive me. Because as I sit here right now, I'm not sure a heaven preacher. In fact, as preachers, I sit here right now, the truth is, the prospect of hell, that makes me afraid. Yes, I believe I'd like to come to Jesus. I'd like to ask Jesus to come into my life today. Now, uh, this between you and God, is there anyone here right now that would say, Preacher, yes, I believe I would like to accept Jesus Christ into my life. I believe I'd like to do that. Nobody's looking except God, and the only reason I am is so I, I could pray, and I won't embarrass you, I won't walk out to you, but I just simply pray. Anyone at all, Preacher, I'd like to come to Jesus. If you just slip your hand up quick, right up and right back down, preacher, I'd like to come to Jesus. I'd like Jesus to come into my life today. I'd like to accept him as my Savior. I'll wait just a moment. All right. Well, uh, let's pray. Uh, uh, now, Father, uh, we are so thankful for uh, the lesson from a little, a little boy. <laughs> so thankful that... Uh, 2,000 years ago when they brought children to you to, uh, so you would put your hand on them and bless them, well, there's still parents doing that 2,000 years later. They, this precious, uh, precious little girl, uh, Lord, is being brought uh, for your blessing uh, that the church may join hearts together and that we might, uh, Lord, beseech you for your blessing upon this precious baby. And, uh, Lord, we thank you that uh, this precious little girl has a guardian angel that is before your face. And uh, we thank you, God, that uh, just as you uh, blessed 2,000 years ago, uh, and because you've not changed, because your word has not changed, uh, then uh, we come uh, today uh, to ask your blessing upon uh, this precious baby these 2,000 years later. And uh, so, Father, uh, I especially pray, because there are others uh, listening to the message beyond these four walls uh, by way of this uh, uh, YouTube and and God, I pray especially for anyone that has never come to Jesus. Oh, Lord, I pray they'd come to him right now. And right where they are, wherever in the world they may be, uh, I pray that you'll hear them uh, admitting that they've sinned against you and, uh, and then uh, asking Jesus to come into their, into their life and uh, receiving his forgiveness and uh, the salvation of their soul from hell to spend forever with you as they're willing to repent, to turn from rebellion and sin against you and accept Jesus Christ as their own personal Savior. And so, Father, uh, Lord, we just thank you for this time. It's, it's been a wonderful time with you and your word. And, uh, Lord, uh, we're looking to you to... Uh, Sustain us, uh, Lord, to uh, carry us through these uh, very strange times that we're living in. And, and God, yes, uh, we pray for your hedge of protection around, uh, around your, your, your church, around your people, God. Have mercy, Lord, and we're, we're trusting in you, Father. Uh, bless, we pray now in Jesus' name, amen.